What I like is, I mean, I, I love all forms of drag racing. I like some of them more than others, but I would gladly go to the drag strip and watch pretty much anything race over not seeing something yeah, race, yeah, right? That's true, but, that's true. but the the thing about bracket racing for me that I really, I, I love the skill. I love all of how difficult it is I because I've done a lot of it. But I also like it when somebody is watching who is a heads up drag race fan who watches some of our other broadcasts and they watch the bracket race and they watch long enough to appreciate what's really happening and become a fan of it. And I think that that is one of the things that's kind of missing because Barrett, you said it earlier that people have gotten to where they like one kind of drag racing and hate the others. Like, and maybe hate is a little strong, but like they don't care at all about anything else. They got one they like, and that's all they pay attention to. And that part of it to me is a little sad. I want everybody to at least appreciate and like some of the others, you know? Well, yeah, let, I mean, me, let me throw something in there. Uh, you remember what I said is like going to grandma's house and eating, eating yeah. Sunday dinner, you eat what's made there. You know, so you learn to appreciate pinto beans. You learn to appreciate salmon patties or country fried steak. I love yeah. me some salmon patties. All, all of these, you're up. like making me hungry, dude. Yeah, I, 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 that's what I'm right yeah. now. The, the thing is, is that when I grew up in the 70s uh, watching the drag racing, I learned to love sportsman racing because I love modified eliminator. I love yeah. the 50, uh, uh, you know, 50 pound flywheels, the 30 pound flywheels, heavy flywheels and yep. wind them up. And, and, but yet I, I really enjoyed watching the guy with the five second, eighth mile Monza running down the seven second Malibu. I mean, I thought that was the right. greatest thing in the world, but, and, and as well, the funny cars, the pro stocks and everything. And everybody says, well, you know, eighth mile is just half of what real racing is. You're an idiot, okay? You're yeah. an idiot. <laughs> how, how is this if a – and mind you this. I'm, I was not the average 12-year-old, okay? We, we can all agree on that. I'm not the average 53-year-old, okay? No, you are not. But, <laughs> so I would, I would get National Dragster, and an F-Gas Corvette at my local track would run a 650, okay? So if he ran a 650 in the eighth mile, I look on the index. The index is a 640. Then I'd look at what the quarter mile index was, was what, maybe a 10 flat? Yeah, it was a 10 to it. Right and 10. then I figured out what they were running in that. That's why people, I, I, I just wanted to say, you know what, just shut up. You you are making yourself look so ignorant when you're talking, right. I can't calculate and all this stuff. If a 12-year-old can calculate what a what an F-gas Corvette's running in the eighth mile to quarter mile, then you can calculate it yourself. Oh, yeah. But that's that's me and my soapbox. Yeah, I think it, it, it kind of comes down to like for me when you say about we'll just say we're ranking drag racing and all that stuff it comes down to like a couple things. Is it good for motorsports manufacturers all that other stuff? Yes. Uh, yeah. Is it good for the promoters because without the promoters without the tracks, obviously you got to make money. It is this ain't a charity. Um, right. Is it good for the racers? Yes. Is it good for the fans outside of the ones that are either there because, you know, their husband's racing or something else? Right. I, you know, you're going to see some regular people. They're just going to be like, hey, man, uh, you know, that's my buddy or whatever. I ain't got nothing going on. I'm just going to go, you know, cook out or whatever. Yeah. But other than that, even, you know, bracket racers are like, yeah, there's there's nobody here. Yeah. Right. And, and, you know, the thing is, is that I learned a long time ago that you can't be a victim if you're a volunteer. And if you don't like what the promoter's paying, don't race. If wow. you don't like the cost of what everybody's spending out there, then don't spend the money. Right. You control that. Absolutely. It, and it, here's one of the keys. The sport where you can control what you can control. That's one thing playing outside of the rules. But you can control that. Oh, we priced ourselves out of racing. Well, who, who did that? You said we priced ourselves out. Well, yeah. That would also include you. You we exactly. also include you. You and I together. So if we don't like what the promoter's paying, then don't race. Here, here's the thing: if you take a, if you take any category of racing, right? We've been sitting here talking about bracket racing and sportsman drag racing, 
But if you take any uh, other, you know, form, let's say oh, no prep, right? So you, you, you're taking no prep, grudge, no time, I'll wrap all those up into one, you know, cluster, right? So that, that kind of drag racing does not work if at least most of the pieces of that puzzle that you just put out there, Barrett, are not there, right? Yeah. If the racers either need to be able to make enough money to make it worth them coming out or have enough fun to make it worth coming out, either of those is fine, right? Because both of those have a value. Um, and then the promoter's got to be able to make money at it or at least try to make money at it. Um, and then the, the fans... Those fans have to feel like if they show up and spend good money to be there, that they are walking away feeling like they had a good time and not questioning the amount of money they spent. And quite frankly, I feel like there are some sanctioning bodies who have gotten to the point where they've forgotten about two groups there. They've forgotten about the racers that are not the professionals, right? And those sportsman racers that leave after a weekend and don't feel like they got the value out of their money, right? They didn't have enough fun or didn't have the opportunity to win enough money or enough points. And then the spectators are in the same boat in a lot of those scenarios, right? Where they feel like, man, that was, that was a lot of money we spent this weekend. You know, you don't want anybody to think about the amount of money they spent at the racetrack when they're leaving the racetrack, whether it's the racer or the fan, that should not be your goal is to make it so that they roll out thinking, man, what an awesome weekend. You know, that's the important part.